Hello, Ken Spriggs here with uh, an, an unboxing and a review of the brand new Round 2 AMT uh, Razor Crest from The Mandalorian. Uh, this is a uh, brand new uh, molded kit by Round 2 of this iconic ship. Uh, just became available, just got it in the mail today from Cult TV Man, who I highly recommend. Very quick shipping from them, got it here in about two days, so very happy with it. Uh, I don't have any plans on building this at the moment. I'm just reviewing it and taking a look at it. I already have a version of the Revell 172 kit that I got uh, from from um, Cult TV Man as well. I believe it was earlier in the year. I can't remember exactly, but uh, they had a limited supply come in and they sold out quickly. And I was able to get a second one from Europe that I ordered off of eBay and got that in as well. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about both kits and look at them and um, and then just uh, go over the, the new kit and uh, and just do a bit of a review for it. So, all right, let's take a look. All right, so I just received in the brand new Razor Crest model kit from Round 2 or AMT uh, produced here in the United States. This is a 172, I believe, should be. I don't know why it doesn't say there but it is the 172 interesting yeah I had noticed it doesn't really say on the box anywhere that I can see but here's the back of it so it's gonna be over 13 inches long it has a nice cockpit with figure of Mando and little baby Grogu in his crib Obviously, some other authentic detailing, as they say. On the side, it shows that it has a decal set. It comes with their standard dome base with a, a metal tube to connect it. All right, and the sides just have the same imagery. Here's some shots from the actual show on the side. All right, so this is actually the first version of this ship to be produced and distributed within the United States. So obviously, previously, there was first the little Bandai one, which honestly, I wasn't real thrilled with. It's really tiny. So I didn't actually get that one because it was so small. And then the, um, the Ravel of Germany version, which I have received as well but this is not produced in the United States so this one I was able to get one of the few um, ones that Call TV man got in here shipped into the US and sold out very quickly uh, it's not available in the US anywhere else because Ravel disbanded in the US I did get another one a second one from from Europe which I had to have shipped in obviously from Europe so that brought the price up as well so and this one is as well as 172 so what I want to do is I want to go over this and, and do a, an unboxing and a review of it I'm going to make a, a few comparisons to the Ravel now like I said keeping in mind that the Ravel isn't readily available you can still get it generally I got mine off of one of mine off of eBay had to have it shipped in from from Europe so it is available Certainly that makes the price higher because you have to pay for the shipping from overseas, which is more expensive and the time frame that it takes and that sort of thing. So, but I'm not comparing them to do any critique or criticism necessarily. I want to look at each of these in their own value. But, but again, keep in mind, this is a model that you can get from round two. And I did want to show you something here. I like this. This was on the, um, the cellophane and it says all new Star Wars model kit from AMT and it is it is a brand new kit this is not a repop this was never done before from round two or anyone else in the US so it is an all-new kit obviously round two makes other Star Wars properties right now as well that they're repopping like the Millennium Falcon the X-Wing uh, things of that nature so it is really cool that they've come up with a new kit and uh, and made their own molds and made their own model of it so all right so let's go ahead and um, 
we will take this, take the lid off and we'll take a look at the inside here. And then I'll open these up individually, by the way, as well. So first thing you see is the dome base, the standard dome base that you get from, from round two. It does have a, a metal tube. It's not a rod, it's a tube. So if you wanted to run some wiring through to light it, you can certainly do that, which is nice. There's your standard base. It also shows it that you can have it in a landed position with the landing gear and, um, and you can do that instead. So if you don't want to put it on the base, that's kind of an in-flight mode. So we have the instructions and the decals, which we'll look at here in a moment. Let's open those up. All right, so initially we see some of the main parts. So here is the top of the main ship. And then you have some other parts underneath, like here's some landing ramps for it. Some other parts on the fuselage. And then you have the, the bottom, which is all one piece, which is similar to the Ravel version, which is a nice design. So you don't have to worry so much about seam lines with this type of a design. The top goes over top of this, and it's a natural seam line around the around that side. So it makes it a little bit easier to, to be able to work with that. So, all right. And I'll be taking these out, like I said. All right, we have some clear parts, which are really nice. So you have the, the various windows in the cockpit. And it also has these little discs. And what these are for, which I'll show you when I take it out, is that the engines were made that they can be lit. Really nice feature of this kit that you have the openings for the engines that you can actually put lights. And this disc here is to accommodate uh, an SMD or a, an LED to be able to do that. All right. All right, and then we've got some of the parts of the cockpit. A little teeny uh, Mando figure, even teenier. I don't know if it's in camera, right there. <laughs> Grogu, really super tiny. There's this little teeny crib. Try to get a better shot of these. There's arms for Amanda. And then you have parts of the landing gear. Okay. And then finally we have the engines. And the engines on this particular one are four different pieces. So you have four different parts that go together to form each of the engines. You have the front cowling, and I believe this is the back of that. And then you have in this piece as well. Then you have the rear engines that are opened up, as you can see, very nice. And then the, uh, I forget what that's called, but the, uh, the cowling, I guess. No, that's called cowling, I'm not sure, <laughs> just guessing. The engine with the engine exhaust and uh, you do have to cut out a little bit of part of these if you want to do it so that it's lit up and I'll show that as well here so okay so those are the all the main parts let me go ahead and open these up and then I'll go over these individually all right so here are the two main parts of the hull I didn't remove this from the sprue as you can see so the bottom has this separate piece which goes on Obviously the mounting post hole, if you want to mount it for display, you could easily drill a hole through that and bring some wiring up if you wanted to light it up that way and go with that. You have the opening to the back cargo ramp and you have an opening on this side of it for the ramp, which we often see in the show or have seen in the show. The other side opens as well, but this one is solid on the kit, so it doesn't open up. And of course you have the top, and here's the openings for the cockpit windows. Nicely done. And they're obviously beveled so that the, the clear windows would go in from the outside. So you could paint this first and then put the windows in using some canopy glue to avoid marring them or anything like that 
but it would be nice to be able to, it's nice to be able to paint this first. So on this one here, a lot of the detailing that's in these spots here is a separate piece. It's not built into the top of the kit. It's added in separately. And here's this one, two more windows in the bottom. And then you have the, uh, the spots for the, the guns on the sides, the landing gear. The other landing gear goes in these side parts right here. And another panel, obviously, that goes on the front here to give you some detail on the front also. So, all right. So let me make a quick comparison just because this is the main body of the ship and I want to make a quick comparison between the Ravel and the Ron 2 to just kind of give you an idea. So same basic design. So you have the bottom tub one piece, just like they do. Oops, let me turn it around here. So very similar, very similar design, very similar in shape. Same basic idea was used. The Revell has both doors opened up. Uh, the Revell as well, sorry, didn't mean to make a rhyme there, but the Revell has doors that are able to be opened and closed, including the ramp door. Which then, at this point, I'll make one of the most obvious differences. The Revell has not only the cockpit interior, but it has a full interior for the, the cargo bay down below as well which is definitely a selling point for the Ravel, um, that it has that involved. The, the round two does not come with one for, the, for this bay down in here. It has one for the cockpit, of course, but it doesn't have one here. So if you were to open up the hatch in the back, which you can position it open, and the way this is designed is you can choose between having the hatch open or closed in this one as well, but they're not, they're not pinned in any way for them to open and close and be removable. Same with the landing gear. You either build the landing gear in an open position or you build it so that these have the hatch covers on them and it's not open. So what they call in flight or landed options. So now there is a kit several kits out from Green Strawberry for uh, adding aftermarket detail to to the ship. Now, oddly enough, I thought at first it was for the Ron 2 because they have a cargo bay and they have other things that are added onto it. But surprisingly, it's designed for the Ravel, which is surprising because Ravel has its own interior, so I'm not sure why they they focused on that one and not on the other one. Now, Green Strawberry is from another country as well. I believe they're from, I don't want to say which country, I can't remember now, but they're they're not from the US. So I don't know if they're they're catering to the Ravel market since that's in Europe or in Germany. Um, but it may be possible to use that and build up the interior to this kit. But I have noticed at this point, as you can see, you have that raised part inside of there, which is underneath this. Whereas in this one, this is more flat. So that would more accommodate an interior. Whereas this, this would be a problem. Don't know why. I mean, you could technically, you could feasibly cut that out. Or at least a good chunk of it. And I don't think that would interfere with this piece, which is just going on after the fact. So you could do that if you wanted to. You certainly could use those parts because if you look through this part here, you wouldn't want to see that flat piece right there. Wouldn't want to see this right here. So it certainly has its benefits in doing that. But let's take a look. So the detail is very much the same. Both of them have the same accurate detailing, which I'm assuming that they got from stills or from probably files from the actual show 
the actual filming model. They did make a practical model for the show. So they are the same in that regard. It does seem like the, um, the Ravel is just a little bit sharper. The panel lines are, are thinner and a little sharper. Some of the detail is a little more crisp, but it's all there. It's not, I would say they both have very accurate detailing, very nicely done. And obviously when you paint both of them and you do weathering and panel washes and things like that, you're gonna bring out all this detail. So definitely very nice on both ends of that. And let's take a look. Now the Ravel has all of this detail built into it already. Whereas the round two, you add those in as separate parts and I'll show those here in a moment. But again, still the same, same level of detailing on both kits, which is nice. It's definitely a lot of opportunity to, uh, to really bring out the really cool detail on the Razor Crest. So, all right. So let me go ahead and take a look at some of the other parts. All right, so here's another sprue. Here's the top part that goes inside of the top of the ship. It fills in this detail right here. Also very nicely done. A lot of good detail down in there, as you can see. Uh, I'd have to look and see. I'm not sure what these these probably have to do with going on the top, I would think. Well, let's see, not really. These are probably, these are the wings, obviously, the parts for the wings that go out to the engines. Yeah. They probably go somewhere on this side here, or underneath here. Yeah, I think that's where they would go. Okay. And then of course we have the various, well, the landing gear covers. We have the different ramps. So you have the ramp for the side, but you, and you have the extension on the side, but you also have the closed ramp door. So you could just put that door on it instead. And then you have the ramp for the back. And actually one of those I believe would be closed. One of these is probably this one here would be the closed configuration. This one would be the open configuration. And again, they offer it as a choice in the instructions. I'll show you that when I get to those. So you can po you can build it with one or the other. You wouldn't have the option to, to simply open these doors up and that kind of thing, so. All right, let me go ahead and get the next sprue. All right, so the next bag has these three sprues in it. And this is uh, all of the landing gear and the, uh, also the, uh, the cockpit interior. So let me kind of show you this. So very nicely done, several parts for the landing gear, including the pads in the bottom over here. You have the, um, the guns, which come in a couple pieces, the housings for that, the outer shields on it, that sort of thing. So very nicely done. The, uh, the barrel of the gun is, is a solid piece, so there wouldn't be any seam lines. There's a notch in the end of it. Sorry if that's not in camera, but not a hole that you can see, but that's okay. That looks good. And then you have the, um, this piece right here, which goes on the front of the ship in that opening that's there. So for this kit, a lot of the outer detail are separate pieces that can be glued in as well and add it in. You also have the two little holes which are opened up, which would be some lights, I believe. So you could drill through that and, and put some lights in it if you wanted to on those parts. All right. This is more of the landing gear. So again, you have the landing pads, you have the, the covers that would go on if you didn't have the landing gear opened probably ones also that would be displayed open if you had the landing gear as well and the different parts of that so all right so that's nicely done 
and then you have the cockpit. So the cockpit's pretty cool. You've got the um, you've got the floor. I guess that's the hatch to go down to the cargo area. You have two walls. You have a couple of other parts. Well, here's a back wall with a door in it. I believe that's out of the seat. I think that's another extended part. Well, it's got a door in it as well. There's two bulkheads, I guess. Yeah, there are two bulkheads between the cockpit and the back of it. You've got the, um, the control panel. This looks kind of nice. The two little passenger seats. You have the main cockpit seat for Mando. Some front detail on that. It's a nicely done part. You got the different control yokes. And then of course, let me get up here. <sighs> Sorry. There's Mando. He comes with his, his main body and two separate arms. And you have little baby Grogu. Let me see if I can see anything in the back. Or the front. So tiny. I believe that's the front right there. His little crib. Little cover for it. That's kind of cool. I like that little feature. And the other parts of the cockpit. So, cockpit's very nicely done. Definitely very nicely done. So, I believe there are decals for it. I will show those once I do the decals. So, all right. Let's look at the last sprue. Actually, I misspoke. There's three more sprues. There's these two for the engines. And then there's the clear sprue. So we'll take a look at the clear in a moment here. But here's the engine. Now, as you can see, as I said, this has four pieces that make up the engine, the, the main cylinder of the engine. So I'm not sure how much seam gap filling you'd have to do once these are together, but uh, that's certainly a consideration. Nicely keyed parts. Some little tabs over here that go together to make them. And then I would imagine these are for connecting them onto the, the ship itself. All right, it's nicely done there. And then you have the, uh, the front cowling, which has this piece as well, and this part that's an insert make those up oh never mind this part with the with the fan ribbing so that would go behind this okay and then you have the engines so this is definitely a good selling point and a really nicely done part I never understood why in the Ravel that they made this a solid piece and they didn't have any openings for the light to come through. I mean, clearly that's what you're gonna to wanna to do is light up the engines on this. And then you have this part here that goes over top. And so the nice design of it is you can, you can paint this and paint it black to light block it. And then you can put on your metallics and weather it and that sort of thing, and then put the light behind it so that it's only gonna come through those openings there, which is the best way to go about doing it. Now they do mention in the instructions for this part right here, that if you want to light it, that you wanna cut out, notch out parts around the in, inside part of it. Because the way it is in the show is that there's light that comes through the bottom of these, and you can even see, let me try to get close to that. Sorry, they're on the sprue. 
you can see that ridge there that's a little more pronounced than the rest of the ridge coming up. So what you would do is you would just cut that probably with a Dremel, sorry, to open that up so that the part that's attached onto here would have light coming through the sides of it. But definitely an awesome approach with this. Really happy with that. Which just makes sense. I don't know why the Revell version didn't do that. But such a simple fix, not hard at all to do, but, uh, but they did not do that. So, okay. So that's very cool for lighting. Let me go ahead and show you then the last one the last sprue with the clear on it. All right, so pretty straightforward. You have your clear parts for the cockpit, which are nicely done, nice and thin. I like that. These parts up here. And then you have these discs, which would be used to light the, um, the engines. So I would imagine what you would do is frost this to catch the light. I think you're supposed to put a like an LED right into this hole, I believe. I'd have to take a look, but certainly you could do whatever you want to do with that to light up the engines. But that's a, um, a part also provided, so. All right. So very, very cool. All right, then finally we have the decals and the instructions. So yes, here's the decals for the floor. That's the hatchway that would go down below. You have some of the controls on there. Not sure what all of these are. Then you have two versions of the orange markings on the side. You have ones that are chewed up and ones that are brand new. If you just want to make a brand new Razor Crest, because like in Star Wars, all of the ships, there's multiple versions of them, even though we don't necessarily see other versions of a Razor Crest. There are, so there would be a new one that would have pristine markings. So that's pretty cool. All right. All right, so last of all, we'll take a look at the instructions. All right, here are the instructions. And again, very odd. It doesn't mention anywhere that it's 172 scale. Very strange. <laughs> I know that it is. And obviously, comparing it to the Ravel, which is marked 172, it is definitely 172. So, not quite sure why that is. It's not important. It doesn't matter. But I guess if you weren't aware of it or didn't know it, you'd probably want to be able to tell what the scale was of this. So, it starts off with the engine parts. And this is what I was talking about, where it mentions that you have to cut out some of the grooves if you want to light that rear engine exhaust manifold, I guess it would be called, whatever it is. And there's a clear part that would go inside. I also make it putting the guns together. Okay, sorry, this is not all in frame. But then after that, you would then put together two halves of the engines at once and then glue the back on and obviously if you were lighting it you have to put that inside and then you put the other pieces on that and the front cowling on there as well pretty basic pretty straightforward stuff not overly complicated build and then you have uh, building the figures so you have Mando you have Grogu you have the controls you have the back seats or the passenger seats that are actually glued onto the wall, some other control panels. And then that whole assembly goes down inside the ship. Okay. And a lot of the a lot of the parts here would tell you to put an optional part on. If you're using landing gear versus putting the post in, there's a little cover for the post hole. If you didn't want to display it on the base. And then on the other side, you have all of the windows that go in. And again, you're putting these in from the outside. So that's a nice feature that you can paint it and detail it first before putting those in. 
and then you have the main assembly of everything once that's all together or sub assemblies okay and then it talks about the landing gear and shows you the landing gear and again so they have two different options you have landed and you have in flight so landed you would have the landing gear coming out and the open doors in flight you would have the doors closed no landing gear and the same within the front now i suppose if you wanted to you certainly could just assemble the landing gear since it's all one piece well it's multiple pieces but when you put them all together it's a sub-assembly so you could build those and then not glue the landing gear, gear plates in, just paint them, and then take them off and put the landing gear, landing gear in if you wanted to display it landed. So that doesn't seem like a problem. You could certainly do that. I think similarly with the ramp, same thing. You have just the ramp door that goes on, or you have the opened ramp, but it's just put on here and it's not movable. I mean, if you were, if you really wanted to, you probably could put something in, but, but again, you don't have this piece here that would extend or anything. So I don't know that this would be an openable option kind of thing. You could do that here and put some pins on it, but it's not really designed for that. And the same with the back, you have the back ramp with these opening hydraulics, or you have just a closed door that you just put in place. All right, and then the other kits that they're offering, as I mentioned, they have the Boba Fett Starfighter, the X-Wing. They also have the the uh, the AT-AT Walker, the X-Wing out right now. And I know they're supposed to be bringing out the um, Millennium Falcon and some other things as well. So, okay. So overall, very nice kit, very nicely done. Lots of good options with it. Uh, certainly, if you wanted to do something with the with the passenger or the cargo section, you would ha you could scratch build something or you can get other parts. I do believe the green strawberry would work well for that if you wanted to reproduce your own inside. Since it is the same size and same scale, just a little bit of uh, modifications in order to make the that fit inside because of the differences that I showed. All right, but a very nice kit overall. All right, one more thing I wanted to point out, and this is a pretty standard thing with with round two is you've got the side of the bottom of the box that shows your decal placement. Now it's a bit strange because <laughs> this one cut off, so I don't know what the deal was with that. I'm guessing it's just the reverse of this. So the five goes on this side, the two goes on the opposite side. Same with this, you have like the three over here, the six over here. So I guess you don't really need to see that to know that it's over there. Yeah, and the same thing. So you have the decal showing over here on this side. You just reverse to go in the opposite, which would just be the same thing. You have the, the cockpit. So again, cockpit has some nice detailing. It has some nice decals, as you can see, for the controls. Painting scheme. Yeah, here's all your colors over here for this. That's kind of cool. Very nicely done. And then you have the same thing here. Showing you the back and the front of the ship and the decal placement. So, okay. All right, so that's very nice as well. All right, so overall, very nice kit, very well done from round two. Really nice uh, molding of this iconic ship. Uh, really happy with a lot of the features that they have on it. Uh, my only complaint really, I think, would be that they did not include any type of a um, cargo area interior, uh, a few walls, some floor, that kind of thing that you could have even added on and scratch built your own things onto it. So, but it's not the end of the world. There are options out there for sure that you can do if you want to do that. 
uh, especially since the back ramp is able to be positioned open and so, same with the side you want to see that cargo bay area in there so but that's something you could certainly use the green strawberry for i think or even scratch build something yourself uh, i really like the cockpit i really like the figures of grogu and mando and uh, i especially like the engines and how they're designed for lighting and that they took the the correct option of opening up those engine uh, engine exhaust ports so you can light those uh, so a very nice kit uh, i don't have any plans immediately to be building this but i'll certainly be adding this to my to my future star wars builds uh, somewhere down the road um, for now i'm going to be continuing my commission build of the large mobius pod and um, i have been working on that and filming some parts once i get to a certain certain uh, stopping point i will be uploading some videos of that as well uh, also there are some other cool kits coming out from 2001 here shortly the very large space clipper it's about two feet long which is supposed to be coming out here very shortly which i will be getting and uh, a very small version of 1350 scale uh, space clipper as well so once those are released i will be doing a review and unboxing of those also those i do plan on building here in the near future or at least starting sometime by the beginning of next year to get those ready for Wonderfest next year. So, all right. Thank you to all my new subscribers and stay tuned.